Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies, on this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I've brought back Zen Honeycutt. She was back on in episode 426, where she shared her organization's testing data on toxins in fast food. On this episode, we're diving into the dangers of glyphosate in your produce, legumes, and processed foods. You see, I brought back Zen because over and over again, I see my clients and even my own health improve when we switch to organic foods or foods that were grown without pesticides. In the podcast after this one, I'll share my personal story with going all organic and non-toxic in the food department and how it changed my life, then the life of my family, even the life of my dog. So stay tuned for episode 478 where I go into my personal story. Now, Zen Honeycutt is the founding executive director of the nonprofit Moms Across America. It's a national coalition of unstoppable moms who are working to raise awareness about GMOs, toxins in the food supply, and other environmental issues that pose risk to the health of our families. The organization's mission is to educate and empower mothers and others with actions and solutions to create healthy communities. Health starts with your digestive system and what you put into it. If you put toxic food in, it's hard to get results from weight loss, hormone balance, and even healing from chronic illness. I can't stress it enough. What you eat does really matter. Now, you can vote for a healthier food system with your wallet. I hope this podcast inspires you to take action. So let's reintroduce you to Zen Honeycutt. Zen Honeycutt, welcome back to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you so much, Deanie. Thanks to all your viewers. It's great to be here. Hey, my goodness. Last time you dropped a whole bunch of things on us and I got a lot of questions from folks like, whoa, what? Is, is this real? Um, Yeah. Hello. That's why we're here. And you guys have new data. I'm excited to talk about that. But first and foremost, let's get back to, to the, the concept of baby formula with a whole bunch of toxins and I think we've heard like snippets you know over the years and then I feel like it just gets brushed under the table every single time you'll hear it on the news and then all of a sudden it's like brushed under so what's the latest give us a scoop so the latest is is that GMO science is um there's a website GMO science uh, headed up by Dr. Michelle Perro. She's a 43 year I think veteran pediatrician has t- tens of thousands of patients mostly focuses on homeopathy you know, she she uses what works and she has a lot of patients with autism and disrupted gut biome and all of that and she's just fed up with people with kids being sick and she wrote a book called What's Making Our Children Sick so she did a deep dive into it And then we did an interview on our show called the new MDs, moms, doctors, and scientists working together to heal our children with a woman named Jean Defoe, who wrote a book called unsafe on any plate. And that in that book, she talks about how mercury is used to extract the corn syrup solids from corn to make, you know, our processed foods. And, and Dr. Michelle Perro realized that about 47% of baby formulas, uh, I mean, the the contents of baby formulas can be up to 47% corn syrup solids. So there could be, you know, high levels of mercury in baby formula, which is extremely toxic and, uh, it, you know, must be avoided at all costs. So she initiated this baby formula testing, thinking that we would find high levels of mercury. Now we did find mercury in um, 55% of the samples, which is not good, you know, cause no level is, uh, is good at all. Um, but we found, uh, and we found cadmium in 35% of the samples and arsenic in 57% of the samples, but we found aluminum and lead in a hundred percent of the samples. Wow. Yeah. And lead, there should be no level of lead and some, and 80% of the samples had lead levels higher than what the EPA allows in drinking water. And this formula is before drinking water was added. This is this is powder formula, right? So then people are adding water on top of it. Um, you know, we know what happened in Flint, all kinds of heavy metals in the, in the water there from the pipes. And we believe also because there were, nobody talks about this, there were GMO sugar beet farms upstream from Flint where glyphosate was used 
on a consistent basis. And glyphosate is a chelator. It grabs onto and makes unavail uh, and makes unavailable the vital nutrients of any living thing it touches. It also was used as a pipe cleaner when it was first discovered. So you've got glyphosate in the water from upstream grabbing onto these dirty, the, the heavy metals in the pipes and bringing, you know, we're, we're uh, asserting bringing those heavy metals into the water. Nobody talks about this. They want to just change the pipes out, but not do anything about the GMO uh, sugar beet farming using, you know, how many thousands of pounds of glyphosate every year. So anyway, we've got uh, lead in the, in the baby formula, uh, also pop potentially in the water, of course, and levels of aluminum that were astronomical, 41,000 parts per billion of aluminum in uh, a goat's milk baby formula. And, and, and then high levels in a couple of different uh, baby formulas. And this level of aluminum exceeds what would be, um, you know, acceptable by basically mostly European agent regulatory agencies. I have the exact wording on momsacrossamerica.org. Um, I, I don't see it right now, but it, it exceeds the level. It's extremely concerning levels of aluminum. So we're, we're, you know, really sort of besides ourselves because we were hoping that we would find baby formulas that we could easily recommend, uh, but all of them had aluminum and lead in it. And, um, and some of them, six of them contained all uh, five heavy metals that we tested for, all five. And so we have that list on our website of which ones were the, um, you know, most contaminated and, and least contaminated. And we would highly recommend people, you know, checking out that list. Oh my goodness. You know, it's disturbing to me. And, and here's the thing. I've done a lot of testing lately on hair mineral analysis and, and toxic metals in urine just to see like what's popping up for some of my folks who are like, man, I don't feel good. I'm gaining weight really fast. And, you know, my kids too. I'm going to test for myself and see what happens. And I'm seeing this in adults. And, and so I think for a lot of people, we don't realize that these stick around. This isn't something that like it, the kids are going to get it. Oh, well, they'll, they'll pee it out. Right. You've, you've probably talked with Dr. Seneff about this. You've probably talked with Dr. Pero about this because I think a, a lot of folks aren't realizing that these are somewhat in the concept of forever metals in the body. Yes, we... they can go into the brain. They can go into the organs. It's very difficult to detox them. I mean, some of it can be detoxed, but also, uh, you know, people are, are finding that these heavy metals can cause lifelong permanent damage. And I hate to say that because I always think that anything is possible, but this is, this is the consequences and the result that we have, you know, that people have seen, you know, uh, children in uh, Japan were, were um, poisoned by milk powders that had, I believe it was lead in it uh, decades ago. And that's what sparked an entire movement to have co-ops everywhere. So they, instead of going to the big stores now, they go directly to, you know, the, the manufacturers and they, if they're going to use anything, they use milk or, you know, they don't they hardly ever use those types of formulas anymore because of the, the poisoning that can happen. So, um, you know, we're, we're hopefully learning from what's going on in the food supply, but, uh, what, what it showed, what was revealed, especially by, um, Dr. Seneff's and Dr. Perro's research, uh, which I love, it's like a dream come true being a mom, having mm -hmm. a doctor, and a scientist, you know, collaborating mm -hmm. together, um, because their brains just work in a completely different way, you know, on, on the, their experience and their background. So they were able to research and found all kinds of things about aluminum and the impacts and the health. And, and, I mean, Senef has been stu you know, studying this for years, decades. And Dr. Perro found that the FDA actually did test a, a, a decade or two ago and only four different brands of formula. But in one of those tests, they found uranium and they didn't do anything about it. You know, they don't tell the public this, uh, they don't go then and say, okay, well, after testing four, let's test 40, you know, that would be the scientifically acceptable sequence of events. Once you find a problem in something, you keep asking questions like, well, where is this coming from? What can we do about it? Are there more samples of formula that are, you know, poisoned with uranium and heavy metals? So they knew some of this years ago and didn't do anything about it. And when uh, Dr. Perro saw that the Baby Soup Fa Food Safety Act was introduced after um, very high levels of heavy metals were found in baby food, but they refused to accept baby formula in the act, right? They're, they just kept baby formula out. We're like, wait a second, baby formula is the only food that some babies consume, many, you know, 
probably yeah. hundreds of thousands of babies consumed for the first six months of life. Some women don't breastfeed you know, and it just, they, and they don't get milk from a breast milk bank. It's not as super common here. And, um, and so they only get formula and to have formula that is, uh, contaminating their tiny bodies that are in developmental stage with any kind of heavy metal on a consistent basis is completely unacceptable. I mean, if, if another country was poisoning our food supply like this, we would be at war with them. You know, this is, this is unacceptable. I, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. And, and I think one of the things that's really important that I want folks to really understand is that these levels are, are going into babies, right? Like babies. And, and I think folks are thinking, well, you know, okay, this isn't that, you know, okay, we're all going to have stuff that's toxic, but little developing creatures, right? And and the neurotoxic and and chem car carcinogenic effects, I think, are yes. what really bother me because I see I'm seeing cancer on the rise, right? And I'm seeing there's stories all you know every day now. Eighteen month olds, eighteen month olds with cancer, not even two years old, and they're developing cancer. I have I have a friend who's found out her baby had cancer, I think when he was nine months old, and died when he was eighteen months old. You know, another friend who lost a child, uh, you know, not too long after 18 months old. There's now there's different factors, but this is definitely one of them, a contributing factor. Another one is a friend of mine, her her friend moved into a beautiful home in uh, Southern California in a apartment, you know, HOA apartment complex where everybody gets their lawns manicured and done by other people. And uh, they bought a home and their ch the child played outside in the dirt, you know, like basically all summer in the backyard and ended up with cancer. And when they were looking into all the different reasons why, because this baby ate organic, wasn't vaccinated, didn't have, you know, a lot of toxins in the home. The mother was like one of those, you know, we're going to use vinegar or clean stuff um, type of people and, you know, pretty wealthy and, and knowledgeable. And then they found out from the neighbors that the former owners of that house sprayed Roundup in the backyard all the time. Mm. And so the baby was playing in dirt that had been sprayed with Roundup. Roundup causes cancer, you know, glyphosate. So that those are the type of different factors. Then you've got, you know, you've got um, flame retardants on pajamas. You've got, you know, just all different kinds of chemicals in the environment. So there's a bunch of different contributing factors. So what Moms Across America feels is when you can control any of those factors, when you can limit any of the exposure to heavy metals or pesticides or toxins, we should do so because we can't necessarily control whether or not <clears throat> whether or not our neighbor sprays Roundup, you know, before or you know next to our yard or you know the city is spraying it. We can't control some of these factors, but you can control what you put in your mouth and in your baby, and but you can only make wise decisions if you know. And the FDA is not telling us what type of heavy, the baby food manufacturers and the formula manufacturers are definitely not telling us here's the, what the levels of heavy metals are. Now, there are some companies that do this. There's a woman named Kathleen Cavanaugh who runs a company called Zigo and sells oat brand, um, oatmeal and granolas. And she actually has a QR code on the back of the package that says, here's where you can find this batches heavy metal testing. It's wow. amazing. Yeah, she used to work with, it was either the USDA or the FDA. And she saw the shenanigans that were going on there. She's like, we can do better than this. And she did. So she's a great person to, to interview as well. She she just, you know, has integrity in the food that she is serving. So you know what, you know, what levels of heavy metals or pesticides are in that um, oatmeal. And, and other oatmeal distri distribution companies are now getting wiser to this. This is just oats. But there are distribution companies now in North uh, North America that are not accepting uh, oats sprayed with glyphosate, you know, and several other you know toxic chemicals. So there is progress that's happening, but it doesn't happen unless it becomes exposed, unless we learn the truth and people speak up, or they stop buying it, or they complain to their senators and representatives, or they become a senator or representative mm -hmm. and say, "I'm not going to do this," you know, to my people, right? So um, this is this is what needs to happen. And I really appreciate your platform to be able to share with new people. Maybe you've never heard about Moms Across America before. We have all kinds of testing. We initiated the first glyphosate testing in America. We found glyphosate in tap water, breast milk, and children's urine, uh, then found it in, um, we had a supporter who sent us wine samples, all 100% positive for glyphosate. We tested, um, uh, you know, bagels and yogurt and eggs and 
other companies test other orgs tested for cereals and and candies and snack foods and pretty much everything is contaminated with glyphosate. I mean, maybe like 60, 70%. Um, and some, but some foods like hummus and oats and chickpeas, uh, you know, well, I just said hummus, but you know, chickpeas, lentils, peas, beans, and wheat are some of those, uh, the testing that has been done and done on those show hundred percent contamination of glyphosate, like very, you know, very high levels of contamination of glyphosate because glyphosate is used as a drying agent on those crops before harvest. So there's very high residue levels. It's also used as a weed killer on crops that are genetically um, engineered to withstand it, like corn and soy and sugar beets, like I mentioned either mm -hmm. earlier. So, um, but the highest levels tend to be on the crops where it's sprayed as a drying agent, as you can imagine, just before harvest. Um, also because it doesn't wash dry or cook off. It's, it's, you know, and you're, you're, it's soaking right into it. So this is what we've been going after for 12 years is trying to not only label GMOs and get them out of the food supply, you know, by raising awareness about them um, and, and, you know, sort of um, shifting marketplace purchasing power, right, to the organic foods to sell, send the message to the marketers and the food manufacturers. We don't want those GMO foods, but also to get glyphosate banned first step, at least stop spraying it as a drying agent on our food supply, because um, not only is it, you know, incredibly harmful to health, but it has been shown to contain heavy metals. So that's one of the other sources is, is um, we believe is the glyphosate being sprayed on the crops it brings in the heavy metals. I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. I mean, just the other day, this is an interesting thing to bring up um, about the, the wheat. I had a patient, she, she did not have celiac but she has an allergy to the pollen of the wheat molecule. I can't mm -hmm. help but think that there's a connection there with the spraying and all mm -hmm. of that. Have you well, seen? Doctor, you're you're very yeah you're you're astute because Dr. Zach Bush, who's a triple board certified doctor um, and was one of our advisors for some time for Moms Across America, he developed a product that was originally called Restore. It's now called Ion Biome, and it's it's shown to support the integrity of the gut bacteria of the uh, gut lining. Uh, we sell this product on Moms Across America as a fundraiser, but he he says that uh, that eighty percent of the gluten intolerances are actually reactions to glyphosate. That most people are not intolerant to uh, the gluten. In fact, I tested only positive for a gluten intolerant to gliadine, which is a modern wheat. So that means I can eat heirloom wheats. And heirloom wheat and grains uh, that don't contain gliadine, um, and it's just a sensitivity too. But for a lot of people, that gliadine protein compels them to eat. I think the latest stat I saw, and that was like four hundred percent more, like to have a need to consume more food, just like mm -hmm. nicotine and cigarettes. You you want to smoke more, so I mm -hmm. think that's quite interesting that it was hybridized. It's not GMO wheat; it's hybridized to have modern, you know, this modern protein in it called gliadine, which compels people to eat more. Isn't that interesting? Just like the, the xenoestrogens on women's sanitary products, on tampons and sanitary um, pads, cause women to bleed more. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> like nicotine causes people to smoke more. Like the sugar in Coca-Cola and Pepsi, right? Is at a certain level that wants you to want to eat more. And so it's all about more, more, more fast, cheap, easy, tasty. You know, it's, it's I call it the disease of ease but compelling people to be in this cycle of needing more um, because frankly, your body is nutritionally deficient because that food is not giving, if your body, if you were getting the nutrients you needed from that food, you wouldn't want to eat more. You would feel satiated, you know, after a certain amount and we wouldn't have obesity. We wouldn't have diabetes, mm. but the, yeah, the, the food is, um, is devoid of it. So we, uh, I don't know if I answered your question. I feel like I digressed a little bit there, but, um, you know, there's just a lot to cover. <laughs> no, it's, it's good. It's good. You're, you're fine because I think it's just something that, you know, obviously the awareness is, is where I'm at. I want folks to put their money towards things that are going to send the message because obviously we know we have buying power. And that is yes. what we can hold over, you know, if they don't want to listen or or don't want to make change, well, then we put our money elsewhere. And that's definitely where, where I'm at here. Now, one of the things I think is, is really interesting is that, you know, we've got, right, we're, we've got a generation underneath us, right? We want to protect the generation underneath us. And we've got such a huge connection to all these chemicals and, and neurocognitive issues, 
right? And, and, you know, we talk about autism being on the rise. And I remember some years ago, yes, it was being blamed on vaccines. And then they're like, no, it's not the vaccines. And then now, you know, we're finding the same chemicals that we were saying in the vaccines are now in the, the formulas. It's the same connection. We're repeating the cycle here. Can you speak a little bit to, to that connection there with the chemicals, neurodegenerative conditions, things of that nature? Yeah. We have a massive health mental health crisis in America. A lot of people are focused on cancer um, and endocrine disruption. You know, like those are the two foundational factors for whether or not the Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment in California, basically the you know EPA arm of the EPA or the federal EPA, determines whether or not a chemical can make it on the marketplace is whether or not it's number one, carcinogenic, and number two, endocrine disrupting. Nobody has any factors, like guidelines or factors or assessment in place on whether or not it causes neurological disorders. And farmers are actually the number one, they have the highest level of depression and suicides of all the careers, even more than veterans is my understanding. So um, this is, or maybe it's very similar, but it's, you know, it's way up there. And uh, the mental health crisis in America, it, the stat I had is 10 years old is one in five. I think it's more like one in two. Now, there are so many scientific studies linking glyphosate and heavy metals to mental health disorders that it is completely undeniable now. And there's multiple studies showing a connection between mothers being exposed to glyphosate in utero and especially baby boys being born with much significantly higher levels of autism and, uh, and also thyroid issues and liver issues. And we all know that, you know, how important the liver is with detoxing from the body and how those toxins, if they're not detox can then contribute to neurological disorders. And, and there's a couple factors in that one glyphosate, as I mentioned earlier, is a chelator. So it's going to grab onto those heavy metals and it can, it goes through the blood brain barrier. So it can bring them right into the brain. And Dr. Chris Exley has shown that aluminum is found in particular parts of the brain at higher levels across the board in cadavers that they looked at of people with autism and uh, Alzheimer's. So they know that aluminum is causal in according to his you know studies in contributing to autism and Alzheimer's. And there's another way, and it, it, you know, it's probably not just aluminum. There's probably other heavy metals there too. He just happens to focus on a, aluminum, but it, that's what gly glyphosate does is it breaks through the blood brain barrier and brings those, those heavy metals in there. And it impacts the detrimental effects of other environmental toxins. So if they say there's 2,4-D and Parquat and, you know, all of these other agrochemicals that can also contribute to neurological disorders, glyphosate, because it breaks through the through the blood brain barrier and another function I'm going to mention in a second increases the impact of those environmental toxins, right? Like those, the body would deal with them a certain way, like aluminum, for instance, can mostly be urinated out, but with glyphosate there, it makes it much more harmful to the body, right? Now, the other way that glyphosate functions is that it has been shown to destroy the beneficial gut bacteria the target and destroy the beneficial gut bacteria. You know, we have, we should have 30,000 different kinds of be be beneficial gut bacteria in our gut, trillions of bacteria, right? But 30,000 different types. The average American only has 10,000 at, at most now because we've been destroying our gut bacteria and you know all about this. And so, but glyphosate has been sh shown to destroy the beneficial gut bacteria and allow for the proliferation of the pathogenic gut bacteria. And uh, this is mostly in chickens, which shows why, oh, bird flu, right? Well, it's because they're consuming grain sprayed with glyphosate, destroying their beneficial gut bacteria, allowing for salmonella and E. coli and all of these other nasty bacteria to proliferate. And then they give them antibiotics and they, but they develop a, um, a resistance to it. And then we've got MRSA, we've got, we've got bacterias and, and diseases that um, are not reacting to antibiotics, right? Same thing happens in humans, destroys our beneficial gut bacteria, allows for the proliferation of pathogenic gut bacteria, leading to very high levels of UTIs that are, seem like they're practically incurable and all kinds mm -hmm. of gut and hormone issues. Yeah. And uh, the, the gut issues happen because when you destroy the beneficial gut bacteria, that gut is where your serotonin is held, your, meritone, your melatonin, your guarin, your, all of these hormones you know, you know, oxytocin and your dopamine, all, all that stuff. 
the gut is, is the primary place where you are storing, especially the serotonin, which is the primary factor in telling your body that you are satiated, meaning you've had enough, um, you've had enough, uh, alcohol you that's enough porn. That's enough, you know, gambling, that's enough, uh, obsessing and being jealous and, you know, like driving somebody nuts with its obsessive behavior. You, your body cannot say that's enough if you don't have enough serotonin in your body. So when glyphosate's destroying that, you know, depleting that, those levels, you're going to have a much higher chance of having addiction, obsession, bipolar, uh, schizophrenia. And there's been studies to link glyphosate to schizophrenia. So, um, so we have a major issue and what drives me nuts, uh, is when I see, when I go to, um, Al-Anon, uh, meetings and their conjunction with AA, uh, then there's coffee, non-organic coffee and chocolate cake all over a table. And everybody's taking a slice of chocolate cake. I mean, it's fun to have cake and coffee with, you know, friends and to have fellowship, but they just don't understand that they are putting glyphosate into their gut, which is destroying their serotonin and they're, it's fighting, they're, they're doing something that's fighting their own body and being able to be sober, right? They're not giving themselves their body, the body, a fighting chance to be able to be sober when you are destroying your uh, beneficial gut bacteria and your ability for your body to make serotonin. It's, it's, it's just so counterintuitive, but most people, you know, they don't know that. And then glyphosate is also an endocrine disruptor. We all know hormones are essential, you know, just all, all by itself. Um, uh, and it is, um, it causes nervous system damage and it also directly causes neurological damage. So the way glyphosate functions is so detrimental to human health that Dr. Don Huber, who's a 60 year plant pathologist says that glyphosate is going to make DDT look like mouthwash. And DDT was banned and PCBs were banned five years after they were found in breast milk. So we were hoping the same thing would happen when we found glyphosate in breast milk. I mean, we didn't want it to be in breast milk, but when it was there, we're like, okay, well, this is going to be the impetus for getting glyphosate banned, and, but it hasn't been. It's been close to a decade since we've we discovered that. And this the this government is so corrupted by corporate influence that it, they just turned a blind eye and they are, you know, they're continuing to allow the poisoning you know, of our babies and our human population. And there's times when it's just unfathomable to me how people can sleep at night and, and continue to allow this to happen because we have a mental and physical and reproductive health crisis in America right now and around the world that will not turn itself around. We have to do it. We have to have the political will to elect people in office whose first priority in as president or as, you know, people who rep, appoint regulatory agencies is to eliminate these toxins from our food supply in our environment. And I'm sorry, if any of your presidential candidates are getting money from big pharma, big ag, or big oil, they are not your candidate. They are working for them, not for you. And um, I'll leave it to your viewers to research who's getting funding from who, but that that is the most important factor in my mind because everything else is affected by whether or not we are able to live up to our fullest potential. If we're not able to live up to our fullest potential, if we're being inundated by toxins, we can't do our job. So there's loss of job, there's environmental crisis. We can't pay our bills. Then when there's homelessness, uh, we can't reproduce. So uh, sorry, but abortion is a mood issue. If you can't even reproduce, if you're not fertile, uh, you know, glyphosate destroys uh, sperm. It destroys uh, reproductive damp organs. Uh, you know, and we can't, we, we don't have, um, we will continue to have war and bad political policies. If we have people who are mentally ill in office, you know, this one out of five people having mental illness, that includes our politicians. That includes decision makers, includes policemen and your teachers and your babysitter and the people driving, driving in a car next to you. So you may be eating organic and healthy and saying like, I'm doing the best I can, but this is not just a you issue. This is a we issue. This is an entire community issue. And we need to put health as the first priority in America. Otherwise, nothing else will work. Hey, health junkies, if your feet aren't happy and healthy, the rest of you could suffer from low back pain all the way up to neck pain. And yes, 
even gut issues can be related to your feet because your feet are connected to your nervous system. Happy feet equal one less thing the nervous system has to worry about. I want to tell you about Paluva. This is a new zero drop minimalist shoe with the distinctive five toe design. Paluvas give you the most authentic barefoot style experience, but with sufficient cushioning to use in everyday movement, fitness, and athletic activities. Paluvas are super stylish, so you also get a barefoot shoe that looks good too. Paluvas are a step ahead of every other zero drop wide box shoe because they feature separate slots for each of your five toes. So if you've been using toe separators, you can ditch them and just wear the paluvas. Those individual slots for each toe allow for correct dynamic movement of the foot through the walking or running stride, which is important when toes are encased in a single box, even a wide box. Now, Minimalist shoes have faced controversy in recent years about causing injuries from inappropriate use. So you want to get walking in paluvas, living in paluvas, and doing whatever you can while you're going barefoot in your home and safe areas as much as possible. So go ahead and use your specialized running shoes, basketball shoes, work boots, high heels when you need to, but wear paluvas as much as possible to reawaken the natural functionality of the human foot to stand, walk, run, and perform. Try a pair of Paluvas with no risk and you'll quickly realize that these are the most comfortable shoes you've ever worn. They're designed to feel like you're walking barefoot on clouds. So visit Paluva, P-E-L-U-V-A dot com and take 15% off with the code HEALTHFIX. Let's get back to the podcast. I can't agree more. I mean, in my office every single day, I have people who are sicker than I've ever seen. I have mystery illnesses that we go down all these different routes and it's, it always comes back to food source and toxins in the body. It always does. And now a lot of the population, we're similar in age. We've got folks in perimenopause, menopause. I can't help but wonder if a lot of the, the hormone, you know, because of the hormone disruption effect, if we're not having more hormonal imbalances as we head through peri to postmenopause and having more issues with tolerating things because of the chemicals, glyphosate, all the things. I, I mean, I'm kind of like all the things at this point. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, there's all kinds of chemicals in the food supply now and in makeup products and in clothing. I mean, I bought a dress from a designer shop at one point. I hardly ever do that, but it was on sale. I put it on within an hour. My entire body was in a rash. They, they had used some types of dyes or chemicals on that dress that just had my body break out. You know, it's like, there's a lot of different sources, but again, you can do something about the food that you eat every day. And we're trying to do something so that the food that you eat every day, we know whether or not it has, you know, pesticides and heavy metals and toxins in it. So we really appreciate the people who supported um, the baby formula testing, you know, gmoscience.org and Stephanie Senna from, from the new MDs and um, our moms across America supporters, and we're going to keep on it. And we, we do ask people to contact their senators and representatives, because what happened was we met with the FDA the week after we found out, well, like basically the week that we found out about this testing. So we hadn't even released it to the public yet. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, took, it takes some time to review it and have people assess the data, you know, but we did tell the FDA the basics of what we found. And the next week, the FDA actually told CNN that we are we want baby formula to be added to the Baby Food Safety Act. And so we're actually waiting for Congress to get it together and to say yes to the FDA. We, you, we are allowing you a mandate to regulate heavy metals, not only in baby food, but in fam- baby formula. So people need to contact their senators and representatives and say, hey, poison is not partisan. Doesn't matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. The, these heavy metals and toxins in the food supply need to be dealt with. Otherwise, we're not going to have future generations, right? There's there's no point in a legacy of, of what we're creating in America. So um, that's really important. I just urge your, your um, viewers to do that. We don't have one of those fancy platforms right now where you do a click and it sends an email or letter directly to your center representative, but it is so easy to find. It's USA.gov. You just put in, find my, you know, elected officials And they give you their emails, their phone numbers, everything. And you can just cut and paste from our website. We have a petition at the bottom of the baby formula 
uh, article, you can cut and paste it. And we strongly encourage you to add a paragraph or at least a sentence or two at the top to customize it. Like I am concerned about this because I have a grandchild or I'm a, I would like to be able to have children one day. And I don't, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about what to feed them. Um, they need to hear from us and it does matter. They, it absolutely does matter to hear from the public. Now, are some people corrupted and it's not going to matter for them that yes, it's true. But overall, the more that our voices speak up and speak out and they hear that this is an issue, it gets the more that that happens, the more that it moves up on their radar of, hey, maybe I should do something about this if I want to get reelected, right? Mm -hmm. That it, it does move that that issue up to the top of the the rubble that is the mm -hmm. disaster of what's going on in our government right now. But it does move it up in priority. <clears throat> I mean, it, we we have to, right? I used to think, ah, oh, my voice doesn't matter. You know, it's I'm just one person. But if we can get together and really make make a huge statement, I think it's it's absolutely huge. And of course, that's why I wanted you to come on and so we could chat about that. Now, of course, I think another thing folks might be thinking, you know, because this is kind of where, unfortunately, a lot of of folks I try I try to calm the the hysteria in the office, you know, but a lot of folks are like. I don't know what kind of foods to choose. I, I don't know how to cook. I don't, you know, I don't grow my own food. I don't know what to do. Let's talk about what what consumers can do to to get started, to at least begin to know what may be safe. Because even, you know, back, let's say 10 years ago, we used to think, okay, Whole Foods, I'm going to walk in there and everything's going to be okay. Now we mm -hmm. look at the, the labels and we're like, this is bioengineered on it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah but that the thing is that was happening almost 30 years ago. They just didn't have to label them. And Whole Foods actually said they were going to label in 2018 and they didn't. They went back on the word. They got bought out by Amazon and suddenly they said, oh, we're not going to do that. But Obama did pass this GMO labeling act. It was a safe and affordable food act, which was, that's a, just a bunch of malarkey what that was. And he he said on it that you could have a QR code, a website or a phone number to deter, to tell the consumers, to communicate to the consumers whether or not the food was GMO. And a Supreme Court said that's not good enough, right? So the Center for Food Safety had to sue and Supreme Court said that's not good enough. So just this year, this is, and we've been fighting for this for 12 years. Other people have been fighting for 25, 30 years. Um, just this year, now you're starting to see on labels made with bioengineered ingredients, yeah. So they changed the word from genetically engineered or genetically modified to, you know, which we were calling a GMO, genetically modified mm -hmm. organism. We just wanted it to say made with genetically modified or genetically engineered ingredients. They changed it to bioengineered because activists like me and probably yourself made such a stink about GMOs that now that has a bad name and they had to pick a euphemism. So they went with bioengineered because bio or bio in Europe means organic. So they co-opted that word and they put it with engineered. And um, so now bioengineered is how, what they're calling it. And so people are looking at these labels in Whole Foods like, oh, there's bioengineered food in here. There has been for, you know, the late 90s is when they started introducing these corn and soy and products. Bio, genetically engineered or bioengineered ingredients are in 75% of food products. This is no new surprise. Now, I'm not saying just because it is means it ought to be. That's a fallacy, right? I'm not saying, oh, it's been there, so that's okay. No, it's been there. It's not okay. And that's why, one of the contributing reasons why so many people have IBS and Crohn's disease and mental health issues and reproductive issues and cancer. And this is, you're seeing now why. GMO foods have been shown to put like basically holes in the stomachs of the animals, right? Tumors, all kinds of things. 80% of GMOs are engineered to withstand glyphosate. We just did the whole rundown on how horrible glyphosate is. So if you see bioengineered ingredients, number one, it's GMO, which is, you know, could contribute to, to tumors or gut disorders and all kinds of problems. Uh, one of the GMOs, by the way, is called a BT toxin bacteriotherogenesis GMO, mm -hmm. uh, corn, and it's genetically engineered to have the pesticide built in. Meaning when the bug eats any part of that plant, the, the, the BT toxin makes a little toxin factory and it explodes and puts holes in the stomach of the bug that eats it. And that's how it dies. So that's mm -hmm. one type of GMO. The other one is genetically engineered to withstand glyphosate. That's the herbicide tolerant. And then the third type of GMO 
which is, um, I believe it does have to be labeled, but I don't think it's being labeled right now um, because they're arguing that it's not actually GMO. And that's a desired trait GMO, like the apples that don't brown, Arctic apples, they're for sale on Amazon. They don't brown and potatoes, Simplot potatoes that McDonald's uses, I believe uh, they don't brown. They still rot. They huh. still rot. You could smell them rotting, but they just, you don't see them browning. So they can use them for French fries and things like that. Right. So, um, yeah, there's, and salmon that grows four times fatter, four times faster and is, uh, designed to be sterile. Right. Not something I'm interested in feeding my kids. Yeah. Don't know about your listeners, oh. but yeah. So these are the different types of GMOs that there are. And, uh, you know, the government, it is allowing it because they say that GMOs are a process, not a, a product. Uh, yes. yeah, additive, I'm sorry, process, not an additive. So they don't have to be safety tested the way additives do. Like you have to see salt directly as an ingredient on the label, but they're saying this is a process. So they only have to say, you know, now made with bioengineered ingredients. They don't even say in the ingredients, which ones are the bioengineered ingredients? Is it 90% of them? Is it one of them? Do you know what I mean? They're, they're, right. not, dis they're not disclosing that. I've noticed that too. I mean, because now the grocery store is a hunting place for us, um, more or less to see. So I can tell patients, you know, what's what's saying what. But yeah, they don't. They it's it just says made with in very very small letters. Yeah, very, very tiny. Yeah. So let's get into what can they do. That was your original question. What yes. can they do? Yes. Okay. So so organic. The USDA organic label does not allow GMOs or glyphosate to be used. Okay. So that is, if you are buying processed food, that is the safest bet. There's also regenerative organic, ROC, ROC, regenerative organic certification, same thing. And there's more of a focus on regenerating the soil to restore it, to um, have higher nutrient content, more organic matter, sequester more carbon from the air, you know, all kinds of uh, benefits to the soil and the water absorption and climate, you know, effects and all of that, like reducing drought and uh, the effects of drought and all that stuff. So regenerative organic certification in my mind is, is probably the best if you can find it, but it's very hard to find. Uh, and then if you can't find that, uh, or biodynamic, biodynamic is also some, the same parameters. It's been around for even longer and, uh, started by Waldorf, uh, Steiner and, uh, just really pays attention to the, the organic matter and the, the health of the soil. And then the other one is if you, if you can't, if you can't re get regenerative organic then, um, or biodynamic, then organic, the USDA organic label with non-GMO project verified. Because the thing about organic is that they don't test for GMOs. Non-GMO Project Verified goes the extra mile and they test for GMOs and you have to have less than 0.9% of GMOs in your product to be labeled non-GMO Project Verified. Uh, however, non-GMO Project Verified does not test for glyphosate and they do allow it, right? So you could buy non-GMO wheat crackers, but they could have hundreds of parts per billion of glyphosate on them because they're not organic. So you want to have as much as possible USDA organic and non-GMO project verified together. I don't give a rat's patootie if something's labeled non-GMO anymore. It has yeah. to be non-GMO and uh, glyphosate uh, residue free. There's also another um, a label called glyphosate. Um, uh, is it glyphosate free? Sorry, it's it's from the detox project. And it's, yeah, I think it's gly glyphosate residue free or glyphosate free, something like that. Um, so there, there are, and there's bio checked or glyphosate checked, you know, there are a few other certifications where they do test and check for glyphosate. So that's, that is, um, you know, the best you can get there besides growing your own food or knowing your farmer. And when I know my farmer and he looks me in the eye and says, no, I know I never use glyphosate, never will, you know, I don't care that he's not organic. Do you know what I mean? Right. I, right. It, if, if I feel like I can really trust that farmer that they're not using toxic chemicals, uh, but also ask about other toxins because you don't want them to go from glyphosate to gl to glufosinate. That's by the way, killing dogs or uh, dicamba or parqua or 2,4-D. You know, you don't want them to be using all of these other toxic chemicals. So just knowing your farmer is most important. And, and if you have budget issues, I always recommend to start switching over the things that you eat the most to organic. Just start there. Like if you buy bread and pasta every, every, um, week, 
just switch those to organic first, because those are what that's how you're going to uh, uh, dramatically eliminate the glyphosate exposure to yourself and your gut. If you eat oatmeal every morning or most mornings, that has to be organic. If you eat wheat, pita bread and hummus as a snack commonly, like that's, that's like the staple in college colleges, you know, when there's an event, they have hummus and pita bread, right. And maybe some peppers and carrots and, you know, like very high levels of pesticides on the vegetables, first of all, and very high levels of glyphosate on the hummus and the wheat pita bread. So if you're eating vegan or vegetarian, you've got to be eating organic. I'm sorry. It's just, otherwise you're exposing yourself to the highest levels of glyphosate of all of the diets. So your whatever you eat the most of, and then your grains, any type, anything, grain, bean, legume, anything that's dried, that's going to be sprayed with glyphosate. Those two things are the most important in my mind, even more important than, um, than, uh, buying organic meat, which is very expensive. Do you know what I mean? I would do the, 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 what you eat the most of first, whether it's, you know, if you drink milk every morning or, you know, whatever the, your bread, your pasta, uh, anything that's grains first, um, if you can't afford it. And then things like berries, like strawberries, uh, have to be organic. Otherwise you're introducing very high levels of pesticides into your food supply, I mean, your food, uh, your, into your body as well. Yeah. Oh gosh. Such good, such good advice. Now on your website, do you guys have the links to all, uh, like the, what to be looking for and, and yes. it brands too, or, mm -hmm. And well, we have, so on this one, so for the baby formula, and then I also want to talk about gluten-free mm -hmm. a little bit. We tested gluten-free samples. Yeah. For the baby formula on our article, we do have uh, Kirkland ProCare non-GMO inf infant formula was rated the, if you want to say cleanest, you know, the least contaminated. Um, top scoring is what we call it, top scoring. So, um, and then Similac sensitive infant formula and pure amino hypoallergenic uh, powder infant formula. So the ones that were for sensitive babies, like if you, if you, you know, don't remember this list or, you know, we also didn't test all of the brands. There's 50 something brands. We tested 20 of them. Um, go for the ones that are more for hyperallergenic. They tend to, from what we found, tend to be uh, less contaminated with, with heavy metals. Um, Gerber and Earth's Best were in the middle. And then the lowest scoring was an Enfamil plant-based soy infant formula that also previously from another scientist also tested high for glyphosate. So the Enfamil plant-based soy powder infant formula, which is by the way, probably GMO, the soy, you know, um, was the, the, the least desirable in my, in our, my opinion, you know, of, um, of the formulas. So the, we have that list on our website. We have a shopping, a, you know, guide with all those different certifications that talked about. And then in my, in my book, um, which is right here, I have a whole chapter on shopping and the different, um, certifications that are out there. And it's still, is still, yeah, I have just opened up to it. Shopping for healthy foods, um, whole section in, in my book. So I highly recommend that that's available on Amazon. Okay. Excellent. Now you mentioned gluten-free. Yes. So just yesterday we um, ex revealed the news about our gluten-free testing. We tested 46 samples of gluten-free products and that's thanks to our supporters. And I want to mention Sentner Academy um, in Florida, Leela and David Sentner who supported this. Uh, they are very passionate about a safe food supply. They supported our testing for fast foods as well, which is uh, horrendous. You need to you please view, you have your viewers check out the results for fast food and school lunches that we also tested um, this past year or two. And uh, gluten-free food we tested because 20 million Americans at least uh, eat gluten-free food. I think it's way more, uh, most a lot of people, or should be at least way more even. There's a lot of people that don't know that they're cranky and irritable and tired after eating a meal because of the gluten, um, or frankly, the glyphosate sprayed on the, you know, that's on the gluten products. Um, and so a lot of people are going gluten-free to lose weight, to feel more mental clarity. Like they may even not be aware that they haven't a straight up allergy. They just feel better when they eat gluten-free. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of people with celiacs and there, there are scientific studies correlating celiacs to the increased spray of glyphosate on the food supply. If you think about what it does to the gut bacteria and the gut lining, right. And all of that, then it makes sense. So there's people with celiacs trying to eat gluten, uh, gluten-free food 
And the reports that are coming back to me are then I'm eating organic and I'm eating gluten-free, but my gut is still messed up. My doctor's still telling me I have gut dysbiosis. I have anxiety because my hormones are all messed up. I don't want to leave the house. I, you know, have all of these health issues, rashes and irritability and mood disorders. Um, what is going on? And I said, I think it's the I think that uh, the the glyphosate, uh, sorry, the the gluten free products are um, have glyphosate in them. So we tested, and forty four out of the forty six samples came back positive for glyphosate. Holy and cow. yeah, ninety five point six of them had levels above what Dr. Don Huber, this you know plant pathologist that I told you, says uh, should it's harmful and should be avoided. Essentially, that it impacts your um, your gut bacteria, your sex hormones, you know, your, your, the way that your body functions. Now only 21% of the samples were positive for glyphosate at levels above what the EU says is safe. So they weren't all super high levels, but they are concerning levels. And, you know, what the EU and what the FDA says is safe is simply not based on factual science for the most part. You know, it's, it's more, they're trying to give the corporations, um, some leeway to be able to contaminate the food supply and not be illegal. Right. So, um, so those levels are still very concerning and glyphosate was the most prevalent of the, of all the 237 pesticides that we tested for. And, um, and there were also the highest level of glyphosate was in a, um, a brand called Bonza. It's got an orange wow. box, Bonza chickpea pasta had the highest amount of glyphosate in food that the the lab has ever recorded in human food. I have to make sure I have to check, make check, um, change this article in the article. It just says food. Uh, I'm going to make sure it's, well, I guess that's pretty accurate because animal feed has been like 6,000 to 8,000 time, uh, sorry, six to 8,000 parts per billion. But uh, in human food, this was the, the highest uh, level that was ever recorded, but I'm just going to add that in the article to make sure that's clear. So wow. that was very concerning. Yeah. And that's because glyphosate is being sprayed as a drying agent on chickpeas. I mean, that, that level, uh, it is, it's almost irrefutable that it will have an effect on a human being's health. It is, you know, it's, it's, I believe 41 times higher than what the office of environmental hazard says somebody should be exposed to. It's way far above what the EU allows, um, so, you know, that, that level is extremely concerning. And then we found, uh, pesticides in, you know, even Bob's red mill and King's Arthur flower. Very, very sad about that. We found, um, two, four D it was the next highest amount that was found in gluten-free food. And that's because the people are, you know, going away from glyphosate and using more of two, four D and we found, um, Low, very low levels of minerals as expected, very, very like less than 10% of recommended daily intake, you know, um, from according to a nutritionist point of view. And then we also found gluten in the gluten-free foods. And that this is something that the Celiacs Association says that 50% of the people who eat gluten-free still have reactions. We're like, okay, well, maybe that's because there's still gluten in there. So we tested in three out of the 46 samples, which was Simple Mills Brownie Mix, made good soft double baked chocolate cookies and simple meals, almond flour crackers had levels above the FDA for allowable levels of gluten. Oh and the, my. Yeah. They had 56, 59 and 31 parts per million of gluten. And they're not supposed to have above 20 according to the FDA. Now the, um, the gluten-free certification organization says that you shouldn't have above 10 parts per million. So there were three additional samples that had level of gluten above 10 parts per million. And that was jovial spaghetti, go macro berry granola bar and char pretzels that had, a, um, had uh, levels of gluten above 10 parts per million. So this is very concerning for people who have, you know, children or family members with celiac or they do, and they're wondering why the heck do they not feel good after eating this gluten-free product? Uh, this is and this is unacceptable. You cannot tell me that these companies cannot do tests for gluten. You cannot tell me that they can't batch test and figure this out. I mean, that's their responsibility in making these products. The same with glyphosate, the same with heavy metals. Heavy metals is an 85 to $140 test. And that's for people like us who are just doing one batch. You know, if it's a company doing batch testing every month or every week, you'd think that price would even be lower, right? Huh. So this, this, is, this is something that is avoidable. And yet they are allowing it 
and uh, the food manufacturers and the regulatory agencies are allowing this and therefore uh, directly impacting the health of Americans today. And not just our health, our mental health, our reproductive health, and our ability to do our jobs, to go to school, to have meaningful relationships. I, I, I wish I could know how many divorces have been caused by people eating glyphosate sprayed grains or toxic, you know, we found in fast food, we found butanodiol, it's a central nervous system depressant that causes combativeness. How many marriages have been destroyed by somebody eating jack in the box or, you know, some fast food that has butanodiol in it and coming home and being abusive or a woman eating a whole thing of cake and being completely crabby every single night of their marriage. And the husband just having enough of it because this woman's eating gluten sprayed with glyphosate and doesn't know that she becomes intolerable after doing that. You know, your relationships are impacted by what you eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And on the deathbed, when we're, when we're leaving this beautiful earth, we don't say, I wish I had another, you know, watch or different pair of Prada shoes. We say, I wish I had spent more time with that person. I wish that relation I had behaved better in that relationship. Do you know what I mean? Our regrets go to who we are being in relationships and the food that we eat directly impacts the, those relationships. So that's the thing that I'm most motivated about in protecting and preserving is our ability to function and to um, live up to our fullest potential and to frankly procreate. I think it's the most profound love in the world to be able to birth a being that you created with another human being that you love. And it's, it's very profound. And I'd, I'd like for my children and for other people's children to have that experience if they, if they desire to, you know, but to be able to have that experience. Absolutely. This is so important. And, and back to, you know, back to what I talk about a lot with hormones and women going through perimenopause and, and beyond. I mean, we get moody just because the hormone shifts, add some oh, yeah. food in with, with all this and. Oh my gosh. It's, re it's, I'm going through that right now. It's, it is, um, there's days and I'm just like, it's probably a good idea if I do not talk to anybody today, it, it would probably, you know, and that's just with the hormones when I'm not yeah. eating, you know, gluten or wheat, it's, it's just a, it, it is, there is a hormonal shift that's happening. You pair that with teenagers. I know some people said to me, you know how I know that God was not a, is not a woman was <laughs> <laughs> and teenagers happening at the same time. <laughs> But then, then I had somebody who was a friend who's very religious who pointed out, actually, if we had children when we're, when God made us like 19, 20 years old, right, we would not be having teenagers at the same time of menopause. We have delayed, we have gone against what, you know, a lot of um, our, our body or nature or God has set us up to be by thinking we need to, you know, earn tons of money and have these big, fabulous careers before we have children. So most people are having children in their 30s now versus their twenties. And so this whole menopause, you know, teenage thing <laughs> is happening. Yeah. It's a whole nother subject for another show. I'm sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we would probably do like a whole week of shows on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, thank you so much for coming back on Zen. So much great information. I can't wait to put this one out and let folks really soak it in. How about that? That's probably the best way to, to yeah. think about this. And we do have lists on our website, which, which gluten-free products rated you know the lowest and which ones were the highest so you can screenshot those take them with you when you shop um and keep in mind this is not uh a conclusive study you know this is not every gluten-free product on the market we just don't have the money for that um so if any of your your viewers are uh, willing to be able to donate towards future testing in our programs we really appreciate that if you know a millionaire or a billionaire who just says yeah we think you should have a million dollars a year just to test. I think that's something that is crucial because the FDA is not doing their job. So we're looking for supporters to be able to support more testing and expose what's going on in the food supply. And when we can do over 40 samples, that is a scientifically significant number that the FDA and the EPA cannot ignore. And so we really appreciate support for that. Absolutely, guys. Yeah, if you guys can, Moms Across America, head over there. You'll get like we we're talking about lists, resources, you can donate. But not only that, I mean, you just have so much great information. And we had to tell folks, make sure you guys check out Zen's podcast with Dr. Michelle Perro and Stephanie Seneff. That's the new MDs, mothers, doctors, and scientists. Gosh, you know, that I you're only you guys are new and just the all of the podcasts, I was like, hey, I listen to all these. So 
We'll have that. Thank you so much. Yeah. And go to moms across America and click on connect, sign up for our newsletter. And we have a Monday night moms connect call. That's not a show. It's a discussion. And we have guests on there and people can ask questions. And we also have the neighborhood food network, which is neighborhoodfoodnetwork.com. And that supports you in growing food in your neighbor neighborhood and connecting with your neighbors. It's part of the solution, you know, creating a parallel food system. And, um, and uh, my book is on Amazon and any of the scientific facts I mentioned today are all backed up by data on our website under momsacrossamerica.org under data. So please do peruse that in any of the 400 articles that we've uh, posted about this to these topics. Great stuff, Zen. I have no doubt you'll be back on with more stuff that we can share with folks because guys, as it stands, you can speak out against this. You can talk to others, but you can also use your wallet to make change. Thanks again, Zen. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, Janine. Hey, Health Junkies. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Fix podcast. To help support my mission to bring you tips, tricks, and tools to help you optimize your health, I'd be grateful if you'd like, subscribe, and write me a review for the podcast. And if you hear a product you're interested in on the podcast, you can now go over to my website to learn more. That's doctor spelled out, J-K-R-A-U-S-E, nd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find all the information on my favorite products that I stand behind and use myself. All affiliate income earned with your purchases goes directly to help support the production of the podcast so I can keep bringing you quality health information. I appreciate your support and I'm honored to have you listening to my podcast as a fellow health junkie. Thanks again.